Welcome back. If you just joined us, here's what's happened so far in George Zimmerman's hearing. The judge denied a defense request to shield some witnesses' identities. The defense said some witnesses are scared of retribution, but prosecutors and media lawyers strongly argued for open public testimony. The defense also asking for sanctions against prosecutors or accused of not turning over all of the evidence that they were supposed to. The two sides were also expected to fight over expert witnesses in voice recognition. Now, the prosecutors want experts to tell the jury uh, that a voice heard screaming for help in that 911 call is Trayvon Martins. The defense says it's unproven science. That could be huge. But right now, we're watching Wesley White. We just showed you video of him. Again, he used to work in the state attorney's office, and there he is. And really, it's been a back and forth between him and prosecutor Bertie Della Rianda. Uh, at issue, as far as evidence goes, through Wesley White, again, he used to work in the state attorney's office, you know, the belief is, at least on the defense's side, that there was evidence, three photographs and some deleted text messages from Trayvon Martin's cell phone that were not turned over uh, to the defense. John Phillips is with us, our attorneys. We watch what's going on in court. Number one, how big of an issue could this be as far as George Zimmerman? Because what we're seeing is a fight between two attorneys. But let's talk about what it could mean as far as evidence in the case. It is. And sanctions are usually reserved for after trial. And they're, they're making an issue of it um, right now. The issue is, do they have these photos? Have these photos been produced? And then the rest of this is kind of politics, side arguing between, you know, Angela, a former member of Angela Corey's staff and apparently an IT person. Okay, well, okay, let's talk about, you, you mentioned the politics. What's the undercurrent here of Della Rianda versus White? And got pretty contentious there in that courtroom. Yeah, very contentious. And, you know, the issue is right above Jacksonville, there's a little county called Nassau County. And uh, White is from Nassau County, got stationed in Nassau County. And then his performance wasn't exactly what was going on. There were some allegations back and forth related to some misconduct. Um, there was some, some interplay between White and the sheriff, and all of a sudden, you know, his resignation was asked for, and, and what does that have to do with Trayvon Martin or George Zimmerman? Nothing. Let's, let's, you know, let's get to the point. Was there evidence that was misled? Does the state have it? Who's, you know, does the defense have it? Who's prejudiced? Yeah, because the bottom line, the defense claims prosecutors knowingly violated the law because they didn't turn over evidence to the defense in a timely manner. Mark O'Mara talked about that in court. Let's rewind just a little bit and listen to him as we get everybody caught up. All right, again, all week we've been going behind bars on HLN, led by my colleague Nancy Grace. Tonight, part two of her two-night special as she went to the Australia Jail. That's the place Jody Arias calls home. And uh, Nancy, really some an eye-opening experience tonight, 8 Eastern here on HLN. But right now we're monitoring what is going on very important hearing concerning uh, George Zimmerman, that is Wesley White. At issue concerning him is whether or not the prosecution turned over evidence to the defense in a timely manner, i.e. three photographs and deleted text messages from Trayvon Martin's cell phone. So at the end of the day, John Phillips is with us, our attorney providing expert analysis. Could the defense get a delay because they're not getting evidence in a timely manner? Is that where they're going to go with this at the end of the day? That's got to be the whole purpose. If you're just on the misconduct, why not go to the Florida bar? Why not go and try to work it out? You know, if ultimately the prejudice is four photos and a couple of text messages or a hundred text messages that you didn't have, let's fix it and move on. Um, but what I would imagine is O'Mara and the crew are going to say now, well, if we didn't have that, what else didn't we have? So we want to look at the computer, look at the phone. We want to look more, you know, more thoroughly, do a complete investigation, and we need a continuance because we're prejudiced because of this misconduct. Okay, and again, the, the state is basically trying to say that Wesley White's bias. He no longer works for the state attorney's office. There's bad blood there. Mark O'Mara, the defense attorney for George Zimmer, is questioning now, trying to prove, no, he's not biased at all. Let's get to the bigger point, at least we believe is the bigger point, whether or not, John, that voice recognition experts will testify. How will that go down? Will we... I, at least my knowledge is we're not going to be talking about specific witnesses. It's more the science, whether or not that could be allowed into court. Is that right? Correct. It's, it's based upon the Fry test. There's essentially two expert tests that, that, that exist. There's Fry, which I think there's about 10 or 15 states that still use, and then there's Daubert, which is a federal test. Florida is actually switching to Daubert July 1st, which complicates this matter for appellate purposes. But for purposes of the viewers, it's a matter of whether 
these, um, the expert have used scientific means that have reasonable reliability according to other experts in the community. Okay, so even if it's allowed in, then you're gonna have another fight whether or not the prosecution's expert on this, uh, whether or not they're gonna be allowed to testify, right? It's right. gonna be a secondary fight, even if it's allowed in. Well, and then there's a tertiary fight. What's gonna happen? Okay, so we're gonna allow the report, we're gonna allow the prosecution experts to testify. Then Omer is saying he has experts that, right. that say it's Zimmerman. I've, I can't say that they've never been disclosed, but I've n I don't know who those experts are. I've never heard their name. So, and you can hold, withhold some on rebuttal cases, but this isn't really rebuttal. This is an expert that's, that's going to be relied on for the contrary position. So, you know, then the state's going to be put in prejudicial, uh, prejudicial form because of that. So it, it's a mess and it's a big issue because obviously the screams and the comments on the 911 tape um, are of crucial importance to whether this was self-defense, uh, second-degree murder, or manslaughter. I mean, yeah, that, that could help decide it. Let's be honest here. If you get someone who is believable to that jury to say that is Trayvon Martin begging for his life, or on the other side, that's George Zimmerman screaming for help. And that's what we're monitoring here, whether or not that's going to be allowed in. One other note, the FBI tried to decipher who's talking here. They listened to the 911 calls, and basically they could not say who it is. Basically, they, they're... Contention is that the uh, audio quality is so poor they could not decide. So we're monitoring what's going on. There you see it, a live look. George Zimmerman in court today. We'll have much more after break. Stay with us. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, again, that was Wesley White. He's going to remain in the courtroom, and we believe the next witness will be Ben Kreidboss. From what we gather, Kreidboss told Wesley White that there was uh, some evidence that wasn't turned over to the defense in a timely manner. We're getting a little more information on that. Uh, I mentioned photos on Trayvon Martin's cell phone. Uh, allegedly, these are photos of an African-American male holding a firearm, uh, an, an underage female also in the photograph. The texts were regarding the sale or purchase of a firearm as well. So that is what's at issue here. Let's bring back our expert, John Phillips, an attorney helping us monitor what's going on here. Uh, so how big could it be in the case when we're talking? Is, is it that the photos in the themselves or is the fact that potentially the prosecution didn't turn it over in a timely manner? That's, you know, that's the side issue. The issue is the evidence and what evidence has the defense been deprived. And, and I get that. And my understanding is those have now been turned over. Heck, I've seen them leaked on television. And so... You know, that should resolve it. I've had this problem in a case of mine. A major company failed to give me invoices that I needed and knew existed. And ultimately, they didn't. I got it through a witness. We moved on. You know, you, you, you just want to tell the story. You want to get the evidence to the jury. All of this politics, to me, is just a little outrageous and, and a whole sideshow to this, to this case. But... You know, that's what happens when major politics are involved. You know, the judge has been very adamant about staying on schedule. What, what's the likelihood here the defense is going to get some kind of a delay out of this, if things go their way? She's going to have to show, basically, they're going to have to, the defense is going to have to show that the state intentionally or, or pretty grossly omitted uh, giving over evidence and that there is more. If it's just the photos and text messages that have already been done, no harm, no foul. It's a matter of sins in the Florida bar to look at. It doesn't affect the trial. But if they can show, okay, maybe there's more, then there may be a continuance and other delays and, and issues related to the evidence and, and keeping some of it out. Okay. Again, we're monitoring everything coming out of that Florida courtroom, and we expect, uh, again, the big ruling concerning voice recognition, 911 call. Who is screaming for help? George Zimmerman or Trayvon Martin? That could help decide the case. We're all over here on HLN. The trial starts Monday. You will not miss a moment. We'll have more after break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Morning Express and our continuing coverage of the George Zimmerman trial. What's going on today? A hearing. Again, this trial set to begin Monday. You're not going to miss a moment of it here on HLN. So we have hearings now as they iron out key issues before this trial begins. One of the key issues is whether or not voice recognition experts will testify. That portion of the arguing back and forth has not begun in the hearings yet. Could be decided today, maybe bleed into tomorrow. And that's a key issue because what we have here, the prosecution, they say that they have an expert 
who says that is Trayvon Martin's voice that you can hear in the 911 call. Neighbor calls a report of fight in the back. They say, an expert says, that's Trayvon Martin. He's pleading for his life. Now, the defense says, number one, shouldn't be allowed in. This is not, it's phony science. But they also say they have somebody ready to go. They say, that's George Zimmerman uh, pleading for help. Expert John Phillips, he's an attorney he's with us now. Let's talk about this issue. Could this decide the case, whether or not voice recognition experts are allowed in? I think it's, I think it's absolutely crucial. You know, the, the charging of whether it's murder, manslaughter, or self-defense really depends on what happened during that altercation to the extent there was an altercation and before the gunshot and then, you know, obviously the gunshot. And so who was saying what and who had the position of power is key, and it's going to be up to experts to determine what, who that was more likely, um, whose voice is more likely. How does it figure in that the FBI tried and failed? They couldn't decipher who, who's screaming for help. You know, the FBI gave it their best shot, and, and there's been other people that have said the exact same thing, that it was inconclusive. Now, what you're dealing with here is not somebody with a really good ear that, that heard both or has heard excerpts and they think they know. You've got to show that you've based this on um, accepted scientific standards, whether it's analyzing the voice patterns, whatever it is, and that's what the judge has to determine. Is this something that was scientifically determined, not just an opinion? Okay, again, the scientific validity of voice recognition experts, that's what's on the table today. And the judge could say, yeah, that, that, that's science that could pass, right? But then you'd have a secondary fight after that, and you get specific about the state's certain witness, correct, John? Correct. Then it's, then it's whether these opinions should be admitted. Um, there's still challenges to hearsay and all of the other challenges you'll see. Whether, uh, you know, the fundamental opinion of who was who is one thing. Now, how they're, how they're entered into evidence. And then on the, the second hand, how the counter evidence, um, Mark O'Meara and George Zimmerman's witnesses will be, will be allowed to testify as a whole nother, whether they pass a fry test as well, because they're up to the same standard. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, one other issue on the table, that the defense wants to prohibit certain words. They say they're prejudicial. Let me go through some of these, and John will get your take. Uh, the defense does not want the prosecution to use the words profile, vigilante, self-appointed neighborhood watch captain, wannabe cop, he got out of the car after police told him not to, and also using the terms that he confronted Trayvon Martin. No. It, that, how unusual is that for requests like that from the defense? It's fairly odd. You know, I file motion in limines all the time, motions in limine all the time, and you try to keep out, you know, ambulance chaser and, and those words that, that just tend to flare up a jury, profiling, things like that. I, 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 you can't get rid of every adjective and verb in the, in the dictionary that's, that may be counterproductive for you. So it's a little bit extreme. But, hey, he's, he's throwing it against the wall to see what sticks because he's trying to make this less of a race case, you know, less of the, the theory that George Zimmerman was following Trayvon because he was African-American and, and making secondary guesses about that. And so using, you know, trying to get rid of terms like profiling um, is, is part of that. That tactic. What's the, real quick, what's the likelihood that you'll read the defense on this one? There was maybe one or two words that I think she may she may limit, depending upon whether the door is open. But overall, I think it's going to be denied. Got it. Okay, John. Thanks again. We're monitoring everything that's going on inside that courtroom. Again, key hearings today and tomorrow as they lay the groundwork for this monumental case, and it begins on Monday. We'll be all over it here on HLN. And in such a way that you felt that you wanted to get back at them in some form or fashion. No, not at all. Again, very contentious there between the lawyers uh, back and forth because the state, they were trying to say there's a bias with Wesley White, the man that you saw there. He used to work in the state attorney's office, maybe some sour grapes in the midst of all this. So we're monitoring all of that. That's what's at issue right now. And we're still waiting for the big ruling uh, concerning voice recognition experts, whether or not they should be allowed in. So here is a statement from Trayvon Martin's family attorney, Ben Crump. Let me read it to you just into us. Here it is. It is ridiculous for the Zimmerman defense team to argue that expert voice and analysts should not be permitted to testify at the trial when George Zimmerman himself stated the voice crying for help on the 911 recording doesn't even sound like me. 
Uh, it goes on to say that Zimmerman made this statement in his interview with Detective Chris Reno, and that was February 29th, 2012, three days after the tragic killing of Trayvon Martin. Expert voice analysis is necessary to assist in identifying the voices on the 911 tape. Again, that's a statement from Martin family attorney Ben Crump. Back with us, our expert. Uh, John Phillips. All right, John, how do you think this is going to go down? If you had to make, uh, you know, look ahead, do you think voice recognition experts will be allowed to testify? Do you think that science will be allowed in? Absolutely, especially under the more loose fry standard that Florida has again until July 1st. It, it, it's so important, as long as they can show how they dotted their I's and crossed their T's to arrive at this conclusion, that, it, that it'll be let in. Okay. From there, and we've made mention, but I think it's important for the viewer to know, just because the science is in, that doesn't mean specific witnesses will be allowed to testify. There's fight number two, right? Correct. There's still the same old things. I mean, even, even with the argument that we're having now over these photos, you know, frankly, these photos, most of them have already been ruled out by the judge. But we're still arguing over them, and that's kind of the same thing with the, with the expert reports. Just because she says, all right, you've met your scientific standard, the witnesses still are limited by admissibility and relevancy as to what they can say. Okay, because the prosecution's expert, we believe, will say some damning things against George Zimmerman concerning the 911 call. He could say, I'm, it's, that it's, number one, it's Trayvon Martin's voice, and the close, I'm begging you, goes on to say that as he cleans up this audio that George Zimmerman sounds like an evangelist or a carnival barker saying, and here's the quote, these shall be. So you have that on the side of the state, the FBI couldn't decipher who it was, and the defense, they say, if all this is in, we've got our own expert that'll say it was George Zimmerman asking for help. These, wow. shall, these shall be is a big deal. You know, yeah. if, if that's, if, if, you got to look at the perspective of, of George Zimmerman. If he's kind of gotten to the point where he is either it, it, trying to put out there that this was self-defense or justifying this killing in his own mind, again, not necessarily that it was justified, but say, look, this is the situation we're in, these shall be. Um, that's, that's a fairly significant deal. And, you know, as far as, while I appreciate what Mr. Crump says, um, you know, the, the, one of the parents also said it didn't sound like Trayvon's voice initially. You know, we're, we're, we don't know whose voice it was, and Trayvon can't speak, and we can't get additional exemplars of Trayvon's voice to match it up now because, guess what, he's passed. So... You know, when you're arguing about this, if, if you've got experts that can, again, dot the I's and cross the T, let's let them in. Ultimately, just because the expert says so doesn't mean the jury has to believe it. We'll have six people that will make the determination themselves. Yeah, and, and to, to clarify, Trayvon Martin's father, Tracy Martin, he initially told police the screams were not his, his son, Trayvon, but then the attorney who we'd mentioned, Ben Crump, said that he heard it on a computer. It was clearer, then he changed his mind uh, on, on that point as well. All right, right now, we're monitoring what's going on in that courtroom, but we're not able to do it because the signal's gone down due to weather. So we'll try and reestablish a signal. Again, this is a key hearing going on as they lay the groundwork for the case that begins Monday. You're not going to miss a moment here on HLN. Our trial experts will take you back into court with the most comprehensive, detailed examination of the trial and the evidence and the killing of Trayvon Martin. You know us. You know our passion. We're all in on this case. It's Florida versus George Zimmerman. Your bottom line question, was it murder or self-defense? And this is the trial you have to see for yourself. Decide.